Welcome back to the CG Bros. This is our third and final video on paint effects and creating a vine growth animation. Now we left off last time adjusting the uh, stroke uh, set some of the stroke settings, specifically the pressure settings, uh, pressure scale settings on the shape node of each stroke. And that adjusted uh, the tapering, le the leading edge, and had it actually tapered down with both scale and number of leaves uh, being channeled into the pressure settings on the curve. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and sync up our strokes so it looks like one continuous flow of leaf growth. I'm going to go ahead and hide our leaf strokes and just go ahead and work on the vine strokes. Uh, firstly, let's see this first uh, stroke here meets the second stroke at about 60. So I'm going to go ahead into the second stroke and I'm going to go into the shape node where we set the max clip keyframes and adjust those. I'm going to go ahead and offset those by 60 frames. Oops. There we go. So as this vine grows up, it intersects that one and that one starts to grow. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing up here. So uh, I'll select that stroke, and as the vine hits that, I'm going to go to an even frame here, frame 90, and offset these a bit by 90 frames. I'll do the same thing with this one here. It's about 90 as well. I'm going to go ahead and continue timing out the uh, animation here on my vines, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off the recorder. I'll be right back. Okay. That's pretty nice. Now, we might not want to have this, the uh, extend this uh, time range all the way up to 380. We might want to actually have it, you know, catch back up at the top. So you see it's lagging behind already. So, you know, maybe we'll, we'll go ahead and set that down a little bit to, say, 300. So that way, uh, since it actually is starting later, it kind of keeps up with the rest of the vines that way. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to go ahead and stop it, uh, the video and, and do the same thing for my leaf uh, strokes here and go ahead and set the same keys that I set on the vines. I'm going to go ahead and set those on the leaves. I'll be right back. Okay, I've gone ahead and set all the uh, keyframes on our strokes and I've gone ahead and made a play blast. This is what we've got so far. Some really natural growth going on there. Beautiful. You know, there are a couple things I can see that I'd like to change uh, already. Um, one of them is going to be the size of the actual core vine. I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of that, I think. All right, so let's go ahead and hide these leaf strokes so that we can actually see the stem, core stem strokes a little better. I'm going to go ahead and select all the core stem strokes. And the channel box here, I'm going to just go ahead and adjust their global scale setting from 0.5 to 0.8. And if I go ahead and hide these leaves, um, we'll see that the stems on the leaves actually uh, coincide a lot better with the thickness of the vine there. Uh, that's really what we want. There we go. Okay, um, and we're also going to offset the animation. This is really the, the key port, uh, point to remember here is um, as we finish off. Having the vines move forward in front of the leaves a bit more will really help sell this illusion. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the animation editor, select the graph editor. I'm going to go ahead and uh, frame it all here. And I'm just going to go ahead and select all my keyframes here. And I'm going to offset these in time uh, backwards a bit so they actually occur slightly ahead of the leaf growth. And you'll see what I mean here in a minute. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create a play blast here and we'll take a, a quick peek. All right, here we go with the play blast. And here's what I meant by the vine preceding the leaves. It really adds a a lot to it. it really makes the the effect. You could actually lead these vines a little bit more, but you know if they get out a little too far ahead of the the leaves, it starts to lose the the overall effect. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, render these out. Um, first thing we're going to want to do here is uh, select all of our uh, leaves. We're going to want to convert those into polygons uh, for mental ray rendering. Um, 
So we come down here to modify, convert, paint effects to polygons. We'll do the same thing with our uh, core strokes. There we go. Let's take a look at what that looks like rendered. Okay, here we go. That's looking pretty nice. I'm going to go ahead and render out an animation of this, and we'll take a look and see what that looks like. Okay, here it is. I went ahead and set up a camera so we could uh, view the vine a little bit better. That's very nice. And you can see actually how the leading edge tendrils uh, really feel finger-like and uh, viney as they grow up the statue. We can also see a, little, a few parts where the, actually the, the core vine goes through the mesh, and that's due to the fact that I didn't uh, clean up my uh, initial uh, NURBS curve that I laid down on the surface, but I can go back and do that at any time. I also think on my next pass what I'll do is, uh, these leaves look a little static to me, and I'm going to go ahead and use the pressure curve set, uh, settings that we used earlier uh, to control the leading edge scale and the leading edge uh, number of leaves, and go ahead and see if I can find a parameter on there that can control turbulence uh, over the stroke as well. Okay, let's look at the stroke. You see how it looks kind of lifeless after it sprouts its leaves? We're going to go ahead and change that right now. So let's go ahead and go to pressure mappings here. Um, select our stroke, go to pressure mappings, and if you remember we uh, set our pressure map 1 to scale, and I switched to pressure map 2 from off to number of leaves. It used to, the number of leaves was here on pressure map 3. I'm going to go ahead and use pressure map 3 to control our turbulence. There it is. Okay, now let's go ahead and set our pressure minimum to 10, and our pressure max to 5, excuse me, 0.5. Okay, and now we need to actually activate the turbulence. Let the paint effects know that we want to uh, turbulate it. So let's go ahead and go to the uh, actual stroke. And that's located under Tubes, Behavior, Turbulence. Let's go ahead and set this to World Force. Let's go ahead and set the uh, amount of turbulence to 0.3. Frequency, let's set that kind of high to 5. The turbulence speed, we'll keep that kind of low at 0.2. Two. And I'm going to go ahead and animate this turbulence offset to actually have a have an offset run through the turbulence. So I'll go ahead and right click and create a new expression. I'm going to go ahead and copy the attribute name and paste it down here. I'm going to go ahead and hit the equals. I'm going to go ahead and paste it again. Hit equals, paste it again, and hit the equals sign. And I'm going to go make this equal to the value of time. That's going to go ahead and take its uh, its measurement from the time node. But I'm also going to go ahead and change these variables uh, here to x, y, and z. So I'm going to go ahead and set this last one to z, the second one here to y, and go ahead and create. What that actually does now is creates an offset uh, that's animated using the value of time. Okay. Okay, and there's another thing I'd like to do here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and select all my strokes. I'm going to go ahead and do a window, animation editor, graph editor. And under all my, here are all my max clip uh, curves. And what I want to do is go ahead and select the top uh, keyframes on those max uh, clip curves. I'm going to go ahead and set their tangents to flat because I want all the paths to come to a nice smooth stop at their end. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure that all my other uh, leaf strokes are set to uh, have that pressure curve uh, turbulence setting on the pressure curve 3. Um, and just make sure that. I've got all my uh, attributes set properly, both on here and setting the expression, as well as these turbulence forces on my other strokes. I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, create a play blast. I'll be right back. Okay, here it is. Yeah, see, now it's got some more action in there, a little more life to it as it's popping on. It may be a little little much up here, uh, but... Um, you know, one thing you'll find about PaintFX is it's got a lot of attributes and you can spend quite a bit of time tweaking on them, and I'll save that uh, for you to do. But, you know, this basically uh, can convey the idea to you. Well, that does it for this lesson. Um, you know, I'd, I'd recommend you 